Habits are everything. Even the smallest ones can impact our health, our lifestyle and our success in life. And this is no different if you want to improve your photography. Now there are plenty of videos out there talking about great habits for photographers to get into and all these videos focus on what the habit should be and why you should do it. However, almost all of them miss out one of the most important steps and that's how to build a habit and stick to it. Now the inspiration for this video was a book I read recently by a James Clear talking about the power of habits. And in it he discusses the really simple things that we can do that can have a massive impact on our lives. The great thing about the book is it's really practical, but it's also written really clearly as well. <laughs> clearly? Like, like his name James Clear? It's just, uh, doesn't matter. The point is, this got me thinking, well, how can I use this to improve my photography? And one of the first pieces of advice in the book is actually about your identity. Claire states that the best thing to do is actually focus on who you want to become rather than necessarily what you want to achieve. Therefore, if you want to become a better photographer, he says that you should identify yourself as an I want to become a good photographer rather than necessarily focus on chasing after taking better photographs. So if you aspire to become a good photographer, then this first habit is one of the main things which separates the good from the bad. Most people when out their camera do this. They see an interesting subject, they walk up to it, they take a picture, and then they walk away. So that's why their images just turn out looking like a snap. However, a good photographer walks up to an image and they take a moment to think about the composition of the shot. They start thinking about what's going to be the best angle for the subject. They maybe move their feet and maybe try both a landscape and a portrait. They're going to maybe then look at reviewing the photos they have and then see which of the angles work best and then maybe go back to that angle again to get some additional shots and tweak their settings. Now this is such a great habit to get into. This idea of just taking an extra 30 to 60 seconds just to think about the composition of the shot before you hit the shutter release button. And they make all the difference in the world from turning your photos just looking like snaps into some really great photographs. Now in order to build this habit and stick to it, you need to get yourself some really expensive piece of photography equipment a notepad and a pen. Now, you don't need to get one that actually has a camera on it, but you know, it might stop you from using it for something else, like say, writing really bad puns for your YouTube videos. It's also written really clearly as well. All you have to do is write down a simple list of a few things. The first one is an action. Take three deep breaths. This will help ensure you don't rush the shot and also avoid overthinking it. The next one is a question. Where do you want the subject to be? For example, in the foreground, the background, or in the middle of the shot. At this point here, you might want to think if you want to use the rule of thirds or not. Thirdly, how do you want the background to look? Do you want it to be bloody, in focus? Do you want it taking up a lot of the shot? Or perhaps you just want it taking up a small proportion of the image? And then finally, how can you draw attention to the subject? So for example, is there any sort of leading lines you can use? Or perhaps it's how you end up using the blur and depth of field to end up drawing an eye to the subject. And if you're indoors, of course, you can also look at how you light the subject differently to draw attention to it. Now, if you keep that notepad in your camera bag and use it every time you're about to take a photograph, then it's really going to help jog your mind and to think about the composition before you hit the shutter release button. Eventually, you should get to a point where it's become such second nature, you don't even need the notepad at all. So one of the most obvious advantages digital photography has over film photography is the amount of shots you can take. And this is great for making sure that you get your exposure correct in your camera. However though, there is such a thing as taking too many shots and just holding that shutter button down and just continually shooting away. And a really bad habit to get into is just taking too many shots of the same subject and at least this sort of spray and pray approach where you're just kind of hoping that one of these shots is going to turn out good. Now, the best thing to do here is actually limit the amount of shots you have taken of one subject. And what this is going to do is it's going to make you more purposeful with your photography and it's also going to save some memory on your SD card as well. I would say a good number to go for would be something like no more than 10 because any more than that you're starting to defeat the purpose of the exercise. And what this is going to do as well is it's going to make you more efficient at getting the exposure right because now you can't just take endless shots until you've got the right exposure settings in your camera. Now a great way to remember this is just make it something like a lucky number if you have one that's suitable. So for example if your lucky number is 7 then just make it 7 and that'll help yourself just remember that when you're out there with your camera. However, if your lucky number happens to be 804, then there's a really simple solution. All you need to do is just get yourself some bright sticker, write on the number of shots you're aiming for, then stick this on your camera. For example, next to your viewfinder. Make it nice and obvious, nice and clear, so every time you go to take a shot, it's right there for you to see. Generally speaking, photographers, like people, fall into two camps. The first one are those who plan. 
They make sure their camera bag is packed with every possible lens they could ever need, and they make sure before they go they research the location perfectly so there are no surprises. On the other hand, there are those who just simply pick up their camera, walk out the front door, and just see where it takes them. Now, I'm more of a planner myself, and of course, there is no right or wrong approach to photography, but a great photography habit to get into is to actually always have a set list of photography projects or brief to actually go and shoot. So the idea is that you imagine that someone has come to you with a, a list of photography projects and they've commissioned you to go out and shoot those subjects or those locations or whatever they may be. Now, on one hand, it is yourself that's actually doing it, so you can go and shoot the things you want to do, you can put anything in that list that you want to actually go and photograph. However, on the other hand, you need to try and treat it as if someone is paying you, so try and take it seriously, try and get to a point that you're going to actually execute those shots as best as you can, and take as many attempts as you can to get that perfect shot. What this does is it's going to give you a clear path to aim for with your photography and when you have days when, for example, the weather's not great or you're just not sure what to shoot, then you can always refer to this list and see if you can tick off one of the things on there. And another great thing to do with it as well is try and make sure that some of the things on the list are actually slightly out with your comfort zone. So for example, maybe it's a location that you've never been to before or maybe it's like a type of photography you've never tried before, like macro photography. And if you do that, then what it's going to end up doing as well is getting pushing you slightly to your limits, it's going to help you become a better photographer as well. The idea is that your sheet should look something like this. The first column should be your subject. What are you shooting? Whether that's a location, a person, or even an object. Then the second one should be round about sort of notes in the composition. So be specific, such as you want a specific angle, such as sunset, or perhaps maybe you're shooting your subject at a macro level. And then finally, the season. When are you going to be able to do this shot? Is it something that needs to be done in the winter, maybe the autumn? But make sure here as well that you have some that are also indoor or something you can control so you're not just always relying on the weather being perfect for the shot. Finally, take this list and put it somewhere that you're going to see it quite often because it's going to keep it in your mind and make sure that you don't forget about it, make it nice and obvious. And every time you do manage to tick off something on that photography project list, then reward yourself in some way. Go go out for a meal, go and you know buy yourself some new photography equipment, whatever it may be, just make sure it's something that's going to encourage you to stick to that habit. I really do hope you've enjoyed that video and if you did, here's a link to some other videos I've done that you might also enjoy as well.